Yeah. So the next snake is a really good example of why people get so mixed up in identifying snakes because they can't even tell what colour a snake is. When I ask people what colour snake is, did you see? They say all sorts of things. Accurately. And this is why. It's an experiment that I've done many times showing people a little snake. snake but it's the quietest venomous snakes in the world they don't do anything they're stupidly quiet animals i wish they were a bit more feisty because then uh, they protect themselves a bit better but they don't this is normal behavior for a highland shopper thing. and the color of snakes is often exaggerated because you know people have great difficulty in telling the color of a snake a snake is very hard to tell the color <laughs> the Highland Copperhead had a much better name to start with. It used to be called the Superb. Superb snake. A much better name. Beautiful snake. And they are highly venomous, but they're about equivalent to that of an Indian cobra thereabouts. An Indian cobra kills a few thousand people a year. But in Australia, nobody dies of copperhead bites. Not even a thing anymore. So they've got very poor delivery. That is possible to die from a copy of life. How are you going to get into one? Yeah, that's what copy of the Sometimes they flatten their neck. Sometimes they flatten their neck. Very useful. 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 Very this is how stupidly Australian snakes are named. The names that don't even match what they look like. But I think I might know what's in this bag. Do I remember? Because this bag the other day, I walked through a paddock and got those fish, those farmer's greens all over it. Too. You can tell I've been walking through a paddock when I went to let a snake go. So I'm a snake catcher, and people get snakes in their yard like to go and catch them sometimes. Do you think I ever had a snake catch in my mind? I've never had a snake. I would never have a snake removed from my backyard ever. Actually, I'd put them in my backyard. Because you see, some people are much better at living in Australia than others. Some people like to get very used to this, the wildlife that's supposed to be here. And here's an example of the snake who killed the most snake showmen. And snake show women as well. This snake was also blamed for the most deaths in humans up until the 1980s or so. And for the last 30 years or so, there's hardly anybody who's ever died from this bite with this particular snake. But there's still a lot of folk stories about this guy here. Who wants to be the first to be identified? I'm going to ask the kids what it is. The kids know what it is? You know, you actually know, know what it is. That is, you're actually right. Oh, do you just... I thought for a second there. You were That's a tiger snake. Who's heard of a tiger snake before? Who's heard a dumb story about a tiger snake from some old bloke with no teeth? And that's what happens here. We get lots of stories about tiger snakes, don't we? Farmer Joe told me a story just about a tiger snake. Yeah, they're not good to pat, eh? 
not very good for tat. They're good for looking at. Farmer Joe did tell me a story though. He said, watch that one, George. Oh, really? Please do tell me more. And actually, no, stop your story. Let me tell you the ending of the story. How come? In snake chasing stories, the snake never catches up. Anybody? Nobody's ever been caught up there by it. So, I think people see tiger snake and they just us here. And they're very powerful images, snake. Because you'd be walking along fishing or something on a riverbank. And then you're like, I think that's the dog. And the tiger snake flattens its neck, it sits up in a low arc, like this one isn't. It's like being really flat. Being a sort of a very quiet tiger snake. So it might touch her, and she actually flattens the neck a little bit. And I try and be very gentle with her, because I don't like scaring her. Imagine I just pull her out and poke the fun I don't want to do that. I don't want to get the tiger snake. She will flatten her neck and sit in a low arc and even let out an audible sound sometimes. Sometimes the tiger snake goes at, and it strikes at you. And if anybody's ever heard a tiger snake do that, you think they've ever turned into an Olympic sprinter in the other direction. That's what people usually do. They run the other way and then they go, oh look, it's catching up. Uh, before the invention of antivenom, you would have died. And the other 50%, you would have gone, this really sucks. Tiger snake bite is one of the most unpleasant bites that I've ever experienced. And mates of mine that have been bitten by them too, a lot of handlers get bitten by tiger snakes. In fact, so many that they're the snake that killed the most snake show. But some of the snake showmen used to actually let the tiger snakes bite them. That was part of the show. Letting a tiger snake bite you. And then pulling out a, a remedy for snake bite and then using it and saying, hey, pretty good advertising. I just got saved from a tiger snake bite. Do you want to buy this tiger snake or snake bite antidote? And for a very expensive price. None of these antidotes worked. The thing that protected the snake show me, the tiger snake bite, was that they had very strong resistance to snake bite being bitten a number of times, but guess what usually happens? They either got bitten by a snake that they weren't immune to, or they go to come from a very bad type of snake bite, which they just didn't have enough antibodies in their system to neutralize and still die. Very unreliable immunity, really just resistant. And you can't control how much venom that tiger snake's going to deliver into you. So how about not letting tiger snakes bite you? That's actually what happened. In the 1920s, they stopped letting snakes show them as snakes bite them in shows. You weren't allowed to do that anymore. So here's the tiger snake curling up and adapting somewhat of a defensive behaviour, but a very, very weakly defensive behaviour. But that's usually what tiger snakes can do. They'll curl up and sit up. And if you go near them, they'll flatten their neck and sit in lower. People see that and they go, oh my God. Not. They're not angry. They're not like your missus. They're just scared. They're scared. Because how scary do you think of being around a human or being around a dog or a cat? Pretty damn scary if you're an Australian animal. These invasive species that make these animals' lives help. So, that leaves us with one last snake. And the snake... Take care. Guess who gets some really crap stories told about him? This guy here. In fact, if you go on a Facebook and ask about this snake, you think you're gonna get a dumb story from people? This snake has the most powerful venom of any of the snakes in Sydney. But it's also a snake that's it's venomed in the highest category of all snakes in the world. So in the very highest category of snake venom, this snake venom does come in that category. 
Keep your measure in the laboratory, that is. It's also the snake blame for the most deaths these days, which is about one or two feet per year. Not exactly an epidemic, is it? But just before I get this last snake out, once per show I do a quick lap with the hat. If people feel like it. They chuck in a bit of change. Uh, which is what's kept this snake so going. For all this get this character out. And actually, this snake is in many ways my favourite snake. Because I come across this snake a lot. A lot of people see one of these, they want it removed from the yard. Uh, and that suits me fine, because I like catching this species. It's so exciting in many ways because of his very exciting behaviour. He, he behaves differently to other snakes. <laughs> People exaggerate this guy beyond belief, you can see exactly why. He's a lot different to the other snakes I've showed you. He's come out of the bag very quickly, didn't he? How much more exciting is he? If you're a snake catcher, would you want to catch this guy or one of those other slugs? This guy is way better for a snake catcher to go again. He's the Eastern Brown Snake. And he's very exciting. Isn't he exciting? The Eastern Brown Snake has personality. He actually puts on what we call an elaborate defensive display. But if I stand here quietly, what does he do? Zero. He actually tries to hide in between my legs. He likes, if I lift my foot, he'll actually put his head underneath my foot and try to hide. Because brown snakes are high skin creatures. He often gets misidentified too. Look at the tail with him. Why don't I care about standing still next to the eastern brown snake? Because when I'm moving, he acts in a very defensive way. So if you're stomping along in the bush and you go stomping,